It was a time before empires, before the pyramids were built in Egypt, before the stones were raised at Stonehenge, and in the cold wilderness of the Alps, a man set out on a journey that would last 5,000 years. In 1991, one of the most extraordinary archaeological discoveries of the 20th century was revealed by melting ice. This is the story of how science has spent the last five years trying to unlock its secrets. It all began here in the Alps on the border of Austria and Italy. That summer, Freak weather conditions had produced an unusually large melt. High on a mountain pass, two hikers had found a body frozen to the rock. Not in itself a surprise. Ja, es werden eigentlich schon öfters gefunden, weil ja sehr viele Alpinisten verhungern, die dann die man dann nicht findet, die in den Gletscher eingeschlossen sind und dann dauert gewöhnlicherweise 40, 50 Jahre, dass der wieder zum Vorschein kommt. Unaware there was anything special about the body, a team from Innsbruck University tried to remove the corpse from the ice. They hurried because the weather was closing in, but without adequate equipment, the body was badly damaged. Only as the whole find appeared did it begin to dawn on everyone that this was not like other bodies they had found. Das ist eine normale Gletschermumie, also Gletscherleiche ist, das habe ich mir also gleich, das hat man gleich gesehen. Rumor began to circulate about who the man was, but no one could have guessed the truth. Back at Innsbruck University, news of the mysterious find attracted the media. A beautifully preserved copper axe found with it convinced archaeologist Conrad Spindler that the body was at least 4,000 years old. The oldest frozen mummy ever discovered. Es war das erste Mal, dass wir überhaupt eine vollständige Ausrüstung aus der jüngeren Steinzeit gefunden haben. Das besonders Wichtige dabei ist, dass dieser Mensch ja nicht in einem Grab lag, nicht bestattet worden ist, sondern mitten aus dem Leben herausgetreten ist und uns entgegengekommen. But the Iceman was running into trouble. Fungus had started to grow on him and scientists had to move fast to stop the rot. After thousands of years under a glacier, the Iceman was consigned to a freezer under the university. Spindler was put in charge of the archaeological effort, and the Iceman came to dominate his professional career. Radiocarbon dating proved his initial guess of 4,000 years old was wrong. The mummy was in fact 5,300 years old. This made the copper axe head even more significant, because the Iceman was not meant to have discovered copper for another thousand years. Archaeologists had to redate the Copper Age. It 
It was an unbelievably rich find. Besides the body and copper axe, there were leather clothes, flint tools, and shoes stuffed with grass. Perhaps most extraordinary of all, there was a complete quiver full of arrows. It's not every day that the bowels of the earth just sort of, or the glaciers of the earth just open up and present you with such a wonderful sample. I think we have to take it full advantage of it. All this turned the Iceman into a local celebrity. He was nicknamed Ertzi, and songs were written about him. But celebrity status has its burdens. There were rumours he was a fake, and then that he had been castrated. Things got so bad that Spindler and his colleagues had to carry out a special investigation to confirm the presence of a penis. The politics of his discovery had also turned sour. A mapping team sent to the site discovered the body had not been found in Austria, but 92 meters inside Italy. The Italians wanted their body back. It took months, but eventually the Austrians agreed to hand the body over when preliminary research had been finished. Now, five years on, Iceman is still in the freezer at Innsbruck. After all this time, has he lived up to his promise to shed light on a time of darkness? Hat der Fund äh, zahlreiche neue Forschungen initiiert, so dass wir jetzt ein neues Bild über das Leben des Menschen in den Alpen gewonnen haben. Und äh, insofern hat er das Geschichtsbild über die jüngere Steinzeit wesentlich erweitert. From the beginning, archaeologists have tried to fit him into a culture they already knew about. Ironically, this led to the same discussion the politicians were having. Did he come from the north or south? Five years ago, researchers noticed his flint artifacts, like this knife, came from a geologically distinct area 120 miles to the south called the Monte Lessini. Last summer, Professor Spindler led a dig to this area where he hoped analysis of the flint could pinpoint exactly where the stone was mined. Es stellte sich dabei heraus, dass äh, dieser Silex verschiedene Arten von Mikrofossilien enthält, die diesem speziellen Silex einen ganz bestimmten Fingerprint geben. Es sind äh, verschiedene Lagerstätten gefunden worden, aber auf dieser Stelle stießen wir dann auch auf ein Bergwerk. Die Untersuchung ergab, dass äh, der Feuerstein hier exakt die gleiche Quantitäten an Mikrofossilien enthielt wie der Feuerstein des äh, Gletschermannes. All the evidence suggests that Monte Lessini was not only a thriving flint mining area, but also a significant exporter of its product. In äh, Süddeutschland hat man äh, Feuerstein-Artefakte aus genau der gleichen Qualität gefunden, bis nahe an die Donau heran. Das sind Distanzen zwischen 3 und äh, 400 Kilometer. So weit ist der Feuerstein verhandelt worden und wir gehen davon aus, dass es damals regelrecht Silex-Händler gegeben hat. Sie haben dabei auch die Alpen überschritten, nicht? Surprisingly, Trade was so widespread in the Stone Age that the flint cannot be used to identify where he came from. However, there were other clues. The body is kept at minus six degrees and 98% humidity by being wrapped in ice. This hasn't prevented a battery of tests being carried out and among the first was a complete X-ray survey. His skeleton betrayed a very distinctive lifestyle. 
Also all das sind Indizien, dass die Gelenke doch sehr, sehr stark benutzt wurden, dass dieser Mann sehr, sehr viel gegangen ist. Und vielleicht, Horst, kommst du noch hier oben, das ist ja deine Theorie über die, den Muskelzug am Unterschenkel. Wobei man diese Ausführungen über die extreme körperliche Belastung unterstrichen findet, durch die Querschnittsformen von Schienbein und Wadenbein. Diese ganz typische, eher schmale, spitz oben nach vorne zulaufende Querschnittsform ist ein Indiz, mehr natürlich nicht, für eine lebenslange, schwere körperliche Belastung, die ihrerseits auch Spuren in den Knöchern und Strukturen hinterlassen hat. Und es ist aufgefallen, dass auf der kleinen Zehe an der Grundverlangs hier eine kleine Aufhellung besteht, die an und für sich typisch für sogenannte Frost Beulen ist, das sind also Folgezustände nach Erfrierungen, wie wir sie bei Bergsteigern und Extrembergsteigern erkennen. The Alps were traditionally thought to be a lonely place in Neolithic times. Heavily wooded, hostile to agriculture. Yet here was the body of a man, used to the mountains and found high among its peaks. There were tantalizing clues about possible inhabitants, like these picture stones found in the high valleys and covered in Neolithic images. But the trouble is that erosion of the mountains has left archaeologists very little to work with. Of the people who may have wandered into the Alps, Their lifestyles didn't seem to leave much of a mark. Noi abbiamo delle evidenze in ripari sotto roccia trovate che ci dicono che probabilmente allevavano soprattutto capre e pecore e quindi molto probabilmente erano costretti a una vita abbastanza mobile. But the ice man vividly shows these people were not reluctant visitors, but specialists in mountain living. Un altro dato particolarmente importante è anche il fatto che accanto all'Iceman siano stati trovati oggetti in legno, quindi ci conferma un'idea che ci eravamo fatta, che queste comunità fossero abbastanza mobili e che durante i loro viaggi portassero con sé invece di oggetti in ceramica oggetti in legno perché fa facilmente trasportabili. It was ice that preserved all this perishable material. Without that, the Iceman's tribe would have remained a mystery. He didn't belong north or south of the Alps, but in them. Archaeologists returned to the site a year after the body was found. This time they had the proper equipment and every ounce of the snow was melted. Hundreds of gallons of material were filtered any drop of which could contain an archaeological treasure. At the botanical department in Innsbruck, they are still sorting through the washings five years on and have only completed 10% of the task. Yet they have already found new evidence about his life. Among the thousands of fragments of plants, insects and animals, they found a distinctive range of mosses that he could only have picked up while walking in the southern valleys of the Alps. There was more. They found grains of corn as well. His grain uh, came out uh, from the washing residues from his clothes. They most probably stuck to his clothing and uh, you can see that they are perfectly preserved. This wheat Spikelets derive uh, from einkorn, which is a primitive wheat which was uh, commonly uh, uh, grown during Neolithic within the region. This cultivated species is only separated by threshings, so this is a processed corn. So the Iceman was probably connected to an agricultural community in a southern valley and it just so happens there is a good candidate nearby. In this region only one 
matricide has been found. And that is where you have the uh, Castle Uval at present, and we are very close to that point now. That site has been populated since the Middle Stone Age and also later during the Iceman period, the Copper Age. Castle Uval is only eight kilometers down a valley south from where the Iceman was found. I think it came from down here because I don't think there was very much effort to go from here to the place that he was found, because it might be done within a day. And coming from the northern valley uh, in Turo, that would take days, because it's, it's about 70, 75 kilometers. Perhaps this was the Iceman's home. Born and bred in the mountains, and with equipment any modern mountaineer would recognize. The Ausrüstung des äh, Gletschermannes ist auf eine solche Tätigkeit hervorragend äh, ausgerichtet. Er hatte alle notwendigen Geräte bei sich. Er hatte auch Ersatzmaterialien bei sich, Lederriemen und Sehnenmaterial, wenn ihm etwas mal kaputt gegangen ist. War er autark, konnte selbst seine Ausrüstung wieder reparieren. Und das ist ja in einer solchen extremen Landschaft für jeden Menschen auch heute noch lebensnotwendig. In 1991, his artifacts were no more than soggy piles of material. Now they have been fully restored. Lightweight, practical mountain gear like his waterproof grass cloak. Or his utility belt, full of simple tools. He even had a backpack. These details have given an enormous boost to those trying to reconstruct the past accurately. At this open-air museum in Denmark, they try to recreate Neolithic life for the public, and to them the Iceman is a godsend. We have found single arrows and uh, single bows, but we didn't know what bow belonged to what uh, uh, arrow. And here we have not only the bow and the arrows, we have the quiver, and that was very special. Uh, here you can, uh, 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 this quiver protects the flight sphere, we can close it. We have never expected that the Iceman has had such a beautiful construction. By studying his tools and repeating his techniques, they can even reveal new details about the Iceman himself. I fix the feather two times with a tar and a uh, second time with a thread. We have only two arrows. The one was a little bit shorter. I believe that it was his arrow. And the other one, the longer one, cannot be his. You see here, we have a finished uh, arrow here. And uh, when I do this here with a thread, I can do it only at the right hand man. I have to open here and then I turn it in that way. So it goes in that way as a spiral around the arrow. But the other one, the longer arrow, is left hand made. You can see it. This is going up here, is going that way. So this arrow was made uh, from a man who is a left hand man. So, so this cannot be his arrow. Long ago, in the Neolithic time of the Alps, they have had long bows. They could shoot uh, uh, nearly 180 meters. These arrows can kill bears and wolves. They have found uh, bones, human bones, with uh, uh, arrow points in, flint arrow points in. So it is not only a hunting weapon, it's also a real weapon.
bedenken äh, Sie nur, dass äh, er allein 18 verschiedene Holzsorten in seiner Ausrüstung mit sich führte. Das he heißt, er hat für jedes Gerät, das er benutzt hat, für den Beilgriff, für den Messergriff, für die Pfeilschäfte, das jeweils am besten geeignetste Material herausgesucht. Und das sind eben Kenntnisse, die uns heute verloren gegangen sind. The ice has preserved evidence of his craft skills on his body. His teeth are worn down from working material like wood and leather. His fingernails tell the same story. Close analysis by Italian researchers has revealed the ends are broken and chipped from use. Molte cose ci ha raccontato questa unghia. Eh, molte di più di quelle che ci aspettavamo per la verità. Stress generalizzati e che perdurano per un certo periodo di tempo possono produrre un break, un assottigliamento, un arresto della crescita ungueale. È molto interessante vedere che 60, 80 e 120 giorni prima della morte di quest'uomo vi sono delle linee di ipoplasia dell'unghia. Questo ripetersi in sequenza di, di fenomeni di stress depone in favore del fatto che quest'uomo era affetto da una malattia generalizzata, ricorrente, grave ed anche fatta di episodi sufficientemente lunghi da rimanere registrati. The ice man's health has been a big question since the beginning and he has regularly been taken out of his fridge for tests. The X-rays revealed a surprisingly modern complaint. So haben wir doch massive Verkalkung im Bereich der Hauptschlagader im Bauch gefunden, also der Aorta. Wir haben massive Verkalkungen im Bereich der gehirnversorgenden Arterien gefunden. Aber man kann es, glaube ich, nur in dieser Weise interpretieren, dass es eben Fettablagerungen in den Gefäßwänden ge äh, gegeben hat, die dann zu Verkalkungen geführt haben, also irgendein Stoffwechsel, Erkrankung, erhöhtes Cholesterin, äh, was auch immer. But these furred arteries turned out to be less surprising when tiny samples of bone were sent away for analysis. Sind Untersuchungen am Knochen durchgeführt worden. Man hat Mikropräparate hergestellt und die Struktur der Osteone betrachtet und ausgewertet. Daraus ergibt sich ein sogar noch etwas höheres Alter. Die Anthropologen sind der Ansicht, dass der Mann ein Lebensalter von etwa 45 Jahren erreicht hat, also wirklich im hohen Alter gewesen ist. But following up on clues like this has proved difficult for the researchers at Innsbruck University. Trying to use an endoscope on a crushed, frozen body isn't easy. But they have managed to obtain stomach samples which confirm that his last meal was meat and rough milled corn. Other questions still remain, like how he came to have broken ribs. Es ist ohne weiteres möglich, dass vielleicht zwei Wochen, drei Wochen vor seinem Tod irgendein Unfall passiert ist, wo die Rippen gebrochen sind. Es kann aber genauso gut sein, dass während der Bergung oder im Laufe der vielen tausend Jahre durch den Eisdruck diese Rippen gebrochen sind. Wir können nur sagen, das sind Frakturen, es sind auf einer Seite mehr, fünf oder sechs übereinander, die nicht knöchern verheilt sind. To answer this, they need to analyze a piece of rib. Das Problem, das sich dabei ergibt, ist, dass man etwa ein ein bis zwei Zentimeter langes Knochenstück braucht. Und wir kaum die Erlaubnis bekommen werden, ein so großes äh, Knochenstück äh, der Mumie zu entnehmen. But scientists have found another way of studying his health, without touching his body. When the washings were collected in 1992, archaeologists found strands of the Iceman's hair. These were to reveal an extraordinary detail about his life. At Oxford University, researchers used a machine called a proton microprobe to measure different elements contained within the hair. 
the hairs are about 100 microns in width and our beam can be focused to a spot size of about one micron. So you still have about um, 100 slots that you can sample over across the length of the hairs. We found copper particles on the surface and uh, when we sliced the hair we found that the copper was indeed localized quite strongly on the surface of the hair. And we also found arsenic which is mm. equally unusual and that's I'm not a traditionally um, that's not I'm found in normal human hair to, to the detection limits of our instrument we can't you don't usually see any arsenic so his hair was covered in copper and contained arsenic levels normally associated with chronic arsenic poisoning but there was a problem As he and his equipment became frozen to the rocks, he could have become contaminated with trace elements from the soil around. So the Oxford team had to carry out the same tests on deer hair from his artefacts. If you assume that the basic structure of the deer hair and human hair is uh, similar, then any contaminants in the em local environment would, would be absorbed equally by the deer hair and the, um, and the human hair. But in fact, we found that uh, the deer hair was contained relatively small levels of copper and no arsenic. These are unusually high copper levels for natural contamination. He would have had to have been buried in the outflow from a copper mine or something to have obtained copper levels like this. I haven't seen anything like this in any other modern or archaeological hair that we've analysed. And certainly the fact that his deer hair doesn't have this, these, same, sort of these same peaks of That's copper right, yes. indicates that uh, this is something that was particular to him during his life and not so much contamination after he was buried. If the Iceman was exposed to high levels of arsenic and copper during his lifetime, there was only one source, smelting copper ore, which produces arsenic vapor. His copper axe has had more impact than any other item found with him, and his hair samples suggest he had the skills to make it. But that means he would have to find it, mine it, smelt it, and cast it. Before the Iceman, there was no evidence of a copper industry 5,000 years ago in the Alps. Since his discovery, researchers have gone back to reinterpret other archaeological sites. Could these unassuming dips be remnants of open cast mining from the Iceman's time? An ebenen Stellen is eben infolge der Erosion das Gestein zerrüttet und deswegen konnte man es wahrscheinlich leichter abtragen. Als, als den festen Felsen und hat sicher zunächst dort begonnen. Man hat mit Sicherheit den Malachit gefunden, das grüne erzhältige Gestein, als Hinweis auf das Kupfer. In itself, the presence of green copper ore doesn't prove this was a mining site, but some large round stones found nearby were more revealing. Die Steinschlägel, die man hier also auf den Halden findet, Die haben immer ein ganz typisches Aussehen, nämlich die Rille oder Kerben. Und sie sind an einer Stelle abgeflacht. The answer to these strange markings lay in reconstructive archaeology. Ja, um nachzuvollziehen, wie sie zu der Zeit gearbeitet haben, äh, muss man die Steinschlägel und Äxte selber bauen und machen, bearbeiten. By making hammers out of these stones, they could recreate the same notches and grooves. These were ancient mining tools. There is now increasing evidence there was plenty of copper mining in the Iceman's time. Es wird wahnsinnig viel geforscht in den, in den letzten Jahren und es werden überall Bergwerke entdeckt aus dieser Zeit. Reconstructing 5,000-year-old smelting, however, is not easy. I try to smelt copper from a copper ore, from malachite and copper oxide. Uh, in a crucible, uh, its shape was used in Neolithic time. We have very good examples. 
One problem is maintaining the high temperatures needed to melt copper ore. The most dangerous thing for casting copper is to have too much oxygen in it, for you can hammer it, sharpen it, even when it is very soft, it will break, weakened by the inclusions of copper oxide. And this is the problem of the ancient copper caster. Of course, you can skip all this hard work and use a modern furnace to achieve the liquid copper. At Sheffield University, they have concentrated on the next stage, casting the axe head. We're trying to get a copper axe with this based on this wooden model. And the wooden model is based exactly on Iceman's axe. We are setting it in a two-part mold, a sand. Of course, what you see here, the metal frame would not have been used. It would have been a wooden frame or a wicker basket or something like this. All the tools that you've seen here would have been different. So we are compromising the material. But in principle, the result would have been the same for the Iceman as it is for us. The copper is liquid, you see it? It's not broken. We have to repeat it. I have the experience of, let me say, 20 experiments, and the Iceman or his craftsman, he knew this for some hundred times, yes? This is the big difference, I think, yes? This is what the final object would have looked like. All the ones that have entered the archaeological record have been polished. Now, that is a lot of elbow grease with sandstone, first of all, to get the smooth surface off, and then with sand and water, and you end up with a beautiful axe like this. Despite its age, the real axe head can still draw admirers. Really, it is a very beautiful blade. I had in the museums of Europe about 100 pieces. And this is one of the most beautiful pieces I saw. Closer examination has also revealed how good the Iceman was at casting copper. It has a very distinctive kink at the top, which is obviously a casting fault. And anyone who would see it without a half would recognize and say, ah, yeah, this was Etsy's axe. Every chip and scrape on its surface means something to the expert eye. It has been used and it has been three times re-hammered for sharpening. This I can conclude from the very weak, very tiny uh, widening of, of the blade here. If you hammer the blade, the, the angles, the sides will be a little bit widened. There is, however, a lot of argument about what such an axe meant to the Iceman. How practical was a soft copper axe? Also, I personally would a copper-axe or flint-axe for We have both tried. The copper-axe splits not. It lets itself easily shift. And when there is a cut in it, it can be smoothed. It does not with the flint-axe. It is not broken. This stone axe has a broader angle. And you have seen that I can't do this here because uh, it doesn't go in, because the angle is very wide here. And so I have to work in a, in a very flat angle, so. But this is uh, copper and you see the angle is uh, much uh, thinner than uh, the stone X. And there, so I can go deeper in. It couldn't have been used for any length of time because a copper axe like that is too soft. It would, it would, would bend over um, after 20 minutes without uh, hardening, without being alloyed. You can see it on this one. These are experimental axes. You have to ignore the large things. But if you look at that 
section here, it bends over like this after half an hour use. So it couldn't have been entirely for hard use. It must have been also a multi-purpose tool. I think experiments have shown that in fact, again in practical terms, there aren't that many big differences in terms of the amount of use that one can get out of these materials. I think the differences may have much more to do with the meaning or significance that people attributed to metal as opposed to stone. Among the picture stones, there is a clue to the axe's significance. Le asce che noi ritroviamo raffigurate su queste pietre sono praticamente identiche a quelle che noi abbiamo trovato vicino all'uomo del Similao. Io credo che questo tipo di asce hanno senz'altro un significato particolare perché dovevano rivestire per la società di allora, dovevano rappresentare una specie di status symbol. But the idea of symbolism is rejected by some archaeologists. The ansicht that it is um a cult beil, um a art status symbol, handelt, can mittlerweile to the acten gelegt werden. Es haben exakte metallographische untersuchungen am Gussmetall des Beiles stattgefunden. Das Beil bildet einen vorzüglichen Gegenstand. Man kann es als Werkzeug, man kann es als Waffe benutzen. If as archaeologists all we can say is this is an axe and it's made of copper, then really we're saying so little. We're saying nothing about human history, nothing about personalities, nothing about the nature of, so of society at the time. Can you imagine what it would be like to see one for the first time? I mean, the way these things catch the light, not only would this have been dramatic, but also it would have been mysterious. You may not know where it came from and you may not know how it was made. The technology, the knowledge required, it may have been restricted magic, it may have been sacred knowledge. From the moment of his discovery, there was a theory that the Iceman was some kind of priest or shaman. High places have always been sacred in ancient religions. Perhaps he died performing some ritual on the mountains. The discovery of strange markings on his body seemed to support that belief. If you look at his um, right lower leg, at the ankle there were three tattooed lines. Uh, looking farther, further up here, there are three lines being here. And actually these lines were discovered by using infrared photography. If you look at his back, there are some tattoos that were found on the left side of the back. And these tattoos were at locations where he could not see them himself. So somebody else must have applied them. Mysterious though they are, archaeologists now think these marks symbolize no more than painful joints. Climbing creates very great tension on the legs. So uh, that occasionally may have experienced pain in slow legs, that's quite sure. Insgesamt kennen wir mittlerweile 57 verschiedene Tätowierungen am Körper des Eismannes und wir wissen auch von Naturvölkern, dass man Tätowierungen nicht nur zum Schmuck oder als Abzeichen verwendet hat, sondern auch zur Therapie. Es gibt Völker, die schmerzende Stellen um den Schmerz zu lindern tätowieren oder auch um Heilwirkungen hervorzurufen und das müssen wir auch beim Gletschermann annehmen, denn die röntgenologischen Untersuchungen gerade an diesen Gelenken haben gezeigt, dass äh, dort bereits äh, diskrete bis mittlere arthrotische Veränderungen vorliegen. Nowadays, few scientists think he was a shaman. But what was he doing then at the top of a mountain? After all the research, 
most archaeologists agree with what the locals in South Tyrol thought all along. The Iceman was found at the end of a long valley that pushes north from the plains of Italy. Every spring, local shepherds drive their flocks up this valley and over the high pass to the summer pastures in the north. Im Süden ist es sehr oft sehr trocken ist und da hat man das schon seit Jahrhunderten so gemacht, dass man im Hochsommer mit dem Vieh, mit den Schafen oder Ziegen nach Norden gegangen ist und dann wieder zurück eben im Herbst. Und so wird das auch jetzt noch gemacht und wahrscheinlich war das auch zu Ötzi seiner Zeit so, so gewesen. The route the sheep take today passes far from the place where the Iceman died. But this path was only made in the last century, with dynamite. The ancient route would have taken them right past his body. The Iceman could well have died tending his flock. It seems inconceivable but this tradition is probably more ancient than the Egyptian empire. Today, South Tyrolians are proud of the Iceman and his future is settled. When the Austrians hand him over, he will be housed in this converted bank. Unfortunately, there are still arguments, especially over exhibiting the body to the public. I am an anthropologist. For me, this mummy, before even to be a man, is the remains and everything that we have of our ancestors. And so, it is for this that it is worthy to be seen. I hold that from ethical and moral reasons für nicht äh, vertretbar. Das äh, sind antiquierte Vorstellungen, dass man eben aus Sensationsmacherei Mumien zeigt. Äh, mit der Würde des Menschen ist das nicht vereinbar. Wenn es denn äh, sein sollte, dass man die Mumie zeigen will, dann äh, am ehesten als äh, Replik. But on one thing, as scientists, they can agree. Per Definition, uno studio scientifico non è mai finito. E questa è la ragione che ci obbliga a conservare bene questo reperto. Aus äh, meiner Sicht äh, werden äh, die Forschungen am Mann im Eis niemals enden, denn äh, die Wissenschaft entwickelt neue Methoden. Es äh, gibt äh, neue Forschungsansätze und äh, die äh, Kollegen in 10, 20 oder in 50 Jahren werden noch genügend am Eismann zu untersuchen haben. The future has already arrived at Innsbruck. The very latest imaging system is being used to turn 5,000 CAT scans into a 3D model of the Iceman. It is a whole new way of studying his body without damaging it, and already Professor Zernedin has more questions. Wir sehen auch hier zum Beispiel, wenn wir da stehen bleiben, eine, eine Region im Gehirn, die eine ganz andere Dichte hat. Was immer das bedeutet, ob das jetzt äh, durch die Schrumpfung basiert ist, ob da möglicherweise eine Gefäßläsion war, äh, das könnte man natürlich erst durch eine Organentnahme machen. Aber Did he suffer a stroke? The whole question of how he died remains the biggest mystery around the Iceman. There are no fatal wounds on his body, but maybe his own fickle mountain home proved his undoing. Ja, ziemlich schnell sich ändern kann, Kaltfronten und so, also dass es innerhalb von ein zwei Stunden 10 bis 15 Grad kälter werden kann oder neblig auch und man sehr schnell die Orientierung verliert. Im Nebelleben ist mir selber auch so gegangen. Ich bin ja hier schon seit 16 Jahren immer jedes Jahr auf der Hütte. Ich bin diesen, diesen Weg auf die Hütte sicher schon einige hundert Mal gegangen und mir ist selber schon passiert, dass ich 
im Nebel die, die eigene Hütte nicht gefunden habe. Er wusste die Stadt sehr gut. Und als er 